we present Euler's proof that there are infinite many primes and this is based on what is called the harmonic series. Now what is that? It is the summation of 1 over n for all natural numbers. We know from analysis that this sequence diverges. Okay, So as a matter of fact, it is related to log n it is actually for the nth term, the first nth term of the series sum to log n, natural log, plus gamma, which is uh, Euler constant, is about 0, 0.577. Alright, so we're not going into details here, but let's see how Euler uh, made the proof. So first of all, let's also review the geometric sequence. Here, the infinite sequence here, the ratio is 1 over p, p is the prime number here. So we use the fact that this is actually a convergent uh, sequence and the summation add up to 1 over 1 minus the ratio which is 1 over p. Of course you can reduce that to p over p minus 1 which is a number that is a finite. All right, that's important to keep in mind. All right, now you can use uh, any prime numbers here, right? Let's take p to be 2 and 3, and let's multiply the two terms together. So I'm going to have this, right? So you know that uh, using the distribution law, you can expand this product of two infinite terms into another infinite term like that. So here is going to be summation over all the numbers in the denominator is going to be some factor of 2 and 3 multiplied together. In, in other words, it's going to be 2 raised to n to the power 3 raised to another integer power. Here, n2 and 3 could be 0, 1, 2, and so on and so forth. All right? Or we can just, uh, for the shorthand, say that is summation 1 over m for all m such that there prime factors contains only 2 or 3 power, right? 2 raised to some power, 3 raised to some power, okay? This is a subset of lecture numbers, all right? So let's review. So we claim that if you multiply these two terms together, and you're going to get a summation of 1 over m, where m is a subset of lecture numbers. What if we multiply another term with another prime number, right? So each time you add a prime number, you'd imagine that the summation is over a bigger subset of natural numbers, right? So in other words, if we add another term for prime number p, a new prime number, then the right hand side, the summation is over um, one more. Uh, you know, more integers, right? And the left-hand side, of course, you add one more term, right? It's like a p over p minus 1, okay? So what if we try to do that for all the prime numbers that we know of, yeah? So the left-hand side here is a product across all the prime numbers, right? Each term, of course, is p over p minus 1 is a valid, finite uh, value. And the right-hand side here is going to be 1 for n, so each, so this time n is going to be more. Now we claim that n contains all the natural numbers if you have p on the left-hand side, you know, for all the prime numbers. Why? Because there is a unique prime factorization theorem saying that for any number n, you must have a unique factorization that is p i raised to some ri's power and then from the reasoning earlier right so those n must appear on the right hand side in the summation m must be somewhere there because on the left hand side it has all the prime that appears in the n's unique prime factorization right so with that what we we're saying is that we're going to rewrite it here the right hand side, notice the difference here. Difference here is we claim that uh, it contains all n, and each n only appears once in the summation. In other words, the right hand side is nothing but the harmonic series, right? So we know that the right hand side 
diverges. So which means the left hand side cannot be finite terms. Why? Because each term is finite, you have the product multiplication of finite number of finite values that's going to be finite no matter how big that value is right so we claim that the left hand side cannot have finite terms in other words the left hand side have infinite number of terms of course each term corresponding to a prime number so that that shows there are infinite number of prime numbers okay this is really clever proof and is first by the oiler hope you like the video please share and